Uh, just need a motion to e exit executive session. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, coming out. Um, so do we need a, a motion for the letters of statements or just, um, just no. reference? Mm -mm, just reference. So the only uh, action that we'll take, um, so in regards to the Avon, Avon Drive um, discussion is that um, Therese through the town will issue a, a letter of response um, in regards to that. And then in regards to the, um, the use of class four road um, for cattle as well as um, a newer issues of uh, complaint that um, that two things I'll just read off because it's easier that the town attorney has reviewed the law on this issue and has found nothing indicating that cows cannot use the town highway right of way to reach their pasture in addition he says there is no requirement that they only cross the road where necessary and that that the town's position is based on, no. oh, I'm sorry, a, a, that the complainant's issue is based on a misreading of the cattle crossing sign statute. The statute only pertains to the installation of cattle crossing signs, not where their cows can use the town highway right away, contrary to, um, contrary to the position. The complainants. Uh, Vermont law actually requires drivers, bicyclists, pedestrians, and others in the right, road right away to use responsible precautions so as, as to not frighten or scare animals that are in the town right away um, as per 23 VSA 1127. Thus, the, thus, unless the cows are running at large, there is no pro prohibition to uh, prohibition on cows using the right of road right away to reach pasture and no requirement that they only cross the town highway when necessary. According, the town will not direct the rights to stop using right road to take their cows to pasture. Um, on the issue of the manure, uh, the town is discussing the compost issues with the rights. Um, this situation with manure is not one that the trash ordinance was designed to regulate and the plant and the town plans to clarify the ordinance in the future. So, um, so we had already taken care of the, um, the agenda uh, prior. So now we will open it up to public comment. So we have one in person and one online. So we'll go in person first. Oh, I don't know who has their hand raised. No, there's nobody. Sorry, that was. Okay, just make sure you state. state your name, even though we know who you are. Brian White from Gilead. No, I just, I would just, I'm going to comment on the, his response, the lawyer's response. The, the law reads, I believe, um, the signs will be erected. I think the state statute says that the signs will be erected where cows must use the town road. And I understand if they if they need, if they must use the town road, but this isn't a case of that. And I'm just wondering how you figure it's in the best interest of the townspeople and the general public to be forced to drive, walk, bike, whatever, recreation through their cow manure. And also um, when they move them, they, it's the milk cows, so they move them morning and night you know, maybe three days this week, maybe four next or what, you know, because they rotate. But when they do, any, it's at any given, you never know what time it is. So it's anywhere between, say, 7 to 9.30 in the morning and at night, probably from 3 to 6. You, you can't use the road. The road is blocked. The cows block the whole road. And also they are packing down the ditches and stuff. So I'm just, I'm just getting your input or I'm asking you to act on it because and how is it in the best interest of the general public in the, that, you, that you are entitled to use that land to have to drive their vehicles, walk through their cow I guess that's my only question. Yeah, I mean, I think at this point, the, the statement that we had read is, is what the thoughts of uh, the board as well as um, guidance through, the, through our town attorney. 
Um, so I don't, I don't know if there's any further discussion that needs to happen on that, but. Um, what is your, I mean, do you think it's in the best interest of the public? Would you like to go up there every day to your property and have to, if you want to ride your bike up there, have to ride through cow, cow manure or turn around and wait a half hour for the cows to come down the road? Is that right? When they can use their own. I understand if they don't, if they had to use the road, but they don't have to use the road. They have, yes. they've got 370 acres. They own both sides of the road. Part of the way. They own both sides of the road part of the way and they own the other side of the road the rest of the way. They, there's no need, there's no, it's not a must to use the road. So I, um, so in regards to the manure, we talked about in there that, that um, Therese, as a representative of the town, will be reaching out to the rights in regards to um, the manure. Um, and is the manure in the class three, four, the cattle you're talking about it from the farm down to anywhere given a spot to the drive. Only on, yeah, I think that the they're on the 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 What's happening is they've got liquid manure, just right. like just like Jeff Townsend does. Yeah. And they're using a spreader that's not designed to spread liquid manure. They're using a spreader that's open top spreader that's for solids. So if they fill it more than half full, when they go down a hill, it all comes to the front. And of course, they're gonna to wanna to fill it more than half full to make the trip. And it slops out over the front. When they go uphill, it slops out the back. You've seen pictures of it. I mean, it's where barrel boats where they dump awesome. it out. Not only that, it's dangerous. There's no need of it. If they get the right equipment, Jeff Townsend hauls manure from Randolph to Stockbridge in, in tank spreaders, and I, I never see any in, on four times the cows they've got, and there's never there's not manure slopped in the road. Well, and the, it's dangerous the, too. The town ordinance currently covers you know the entire town, so that'll be part of the conversation with them is manures with, with everywhere. I mean, it would have to be everywhere. We can't just enforce it on you know. I mean, it's it's difficult. We will, but we'll speak to them about it being everywhere. So I'm saying it's not just on Wright Road. It will be, we'll have to talk to them in regards to the ordinance and and um, and what the options are. Uh, so the SLU audio capture not registered. No idea why. Huh? It's Leonard's microphone. Oh, it's Leonard's microphone. Leonard, can, can you just mute, mute for yours, now. please? Thank you. Just mute, yeah. Perfect, thank you, sorry. So anyway, also to, for them to get the right equipment to, to, to transport the manure. Well, we can't, you know, dictate what they buy. But, but anyways, I'll have a conversation with them. As the statement said that we'll, we're discussing the compost issue with the rights and um, the situation is, is not what the trash ordinance was intended for um, or designed to regulate. So we'll, we'll clarify the ordinance in the future. I'm asking you to act on it. You probably won't, but I'm just saying. You're saying all roads, right? Excuse me? All roads. All roads. I'm talking about moving the cow, the cows. Well, the yeah, the statement was that we're not going to direct them to stop using right road to take their cows to pasture because our attorney feels that you you misinterpreted the statute. He gave us his interpretation of the statute, so he's the lawyer. So that's what will. So that's just so you're not so you're not looking to even though they have a different way that they can move their cows, you're not looking out for the best interest of the whole public the, the way you're supposed to. In my understanding, it's supposed to be you're in supposed to opinion. be for the, all the people of the town, not just the people, not just the farmers, because it's more convenient for them. But go ahead. Legal issues should be taken up between your attorney and ours. Yeah. So I'm at this point, Brian, that our town attorney has reviewed reviewed um, all the information that, he, that you had given us. Um, and he's um, pretty well versed of where the locations are because he's been up there with us on, on the walk that we did. And th that's the guidance that he's issued us at, at this point based upon what our current ordinances are, um, state, state statutes, et cetera. So, um, so that's, that is the position that we, we have taken at this point. Um, so Lenny, to have his hand up. Leonard, did you have something? 
You got it. Can't hear you. We can't hear you. He's unmuted, but doesn't appear your mic is working. Yeah, we can't hear you. Oh no. You can type type it in the chat. Type it in the chat. Yeah, or just take your time typing it in. We can always answer it at some point if if it takes you a while to get it in there. Yeah, he's. Uh, Paul, did you have anything? The only other person that's on, so. Oh, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, no, no, just the uh, complimenting everybody on the continuing work to repair the roads and dealing with FEMA and all that kind of good stuff. Hearing a lot of good things. A lot of folks are asking me questions and try to explain to them about the process of dealing with FEMA and, <laughs> and they seem to understand it. Uh, so it's all good. Thank you. Oh, good. So Lenny's question, or Leonard's question is, how old is this law? But I don't know what law. The, the statute that we had referenced, Lenny? You're talking about the trash ordinance or the state law? State law? Okay, I don't know. <laughs> With the state law, it's hard, I can't tell you. I can quote the statute that the lawyer is, re, you know, is referencing, 23 BSA 1127, but I don't know when that law was enacted. And the trash ordinance was passed uh, just a couple of years ago. Two years ago. Two years ago. No, oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So, <laughs> Must have been the way he signed on or something. Must be. There. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else? Um, anything else public comment wise? Okay, here none. We will move on. So we have an appointment, a request for an appointment for the Energy Committee. If anybody was here to represent this gentleman? Do, no, do you, Steve sent know. the message through our, um, Scott Putney sent the message for Steve. So Steve's been going to the Energy Committee meeting. Yes, he has. Oh, nice. Okay. So we just need a motion to appoint Steve to the Energy Inc Committee. So moved. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So what does that leave the Energy Committee at now, Gene? Uh, three. Three. Scott. Yeah. Do we still have? Four. 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 Are okay. there still gentlemen? Vince. Vince. Scott, Vander, um, Chris, and now oh, so five. Scott, so yeah, it's five now. Steve. Yeah, okay. that, that's all in town? No, uh, Vander's in East Bethel, Chris is in Barnard, I think. Yeah. But East Bethel would still be? East Bethel's in town. Yeah, okay, so yeah. we have one, one non-voting, I guess, member. Chris is No, he votes, they allowed, because the, oh, okay. it didn't let him, it, we could have members from out of town. So oh, he's gotcha, still a okay. Member. Just like we used to, Chris Sheffield and a couple other people. Chris is barely in Barnard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's good. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> barely. And then the Knights of Columbus, we're looking at doing a charitable coin collection on Church Street for October 7th, 8 to 12. Just need a motion to approve that. The, um, Thank you. Hey, have a good night. I appreciate the um, traffic diagram, even though it's very difficult to figure <laughs> out. I know. <laughs> so I uh, appreciate the effort, but uh, <laughs> yeah. but the map I was looking at going, yep, I don't really understand any of those positions. It's <laughs> hard to see, so, I agree. But, so we had a, a second and all in favor. Good. So you just need to sign it right here. All right. And and then we had the facility use policy which last time we had sent it back to get some information in regards to 
individual umbrella policies for indiv yep. individuals to have. Yes. Um, and what that information may be, which looks like after. Yes. I don't know where I read it, but somewhere around. Yeah. $75. Yep, I had talked to, I went online to do the tulip process and, and it quoted me for a birthday party, $75 for 250,000 in coverage. I also heard from Washburn Wilson and they said, you know, a typical homeowner's policy can provide some liability coverage, but they recommend people get an event policy. And I think their estimate was maybe 75 to 125. So, um, you know, it depends on what insurance you have, but certainly the tulip process was, um, you know, was a, I wasn't sure how expensive mm -hmm. it would be, the one that VLCT Passive offers, so. I mean, I guess, I mean, looking at that, I guess $75 for a event policy isn't too unreasonable. Um, kind of looking through it like that, I mean. Yeah, considering if somebody was injured, what it's gonna cost you if they sue you. What's the board's thoughts on that? Because that was the only missing link of information to put in this policy. I don't think it's unreasonable. I think that it is not, it is unreasonable for them not to be covered in effects. How does the rest of the board feel? It seems like it's adequate enough coverage. Yeah. So, um, and I can't remember if we had taking that, it's still in the policy, right? Yep, it's under so, security deposit and insurance So we wouldn't be making any amendments then? No, I put okay. it in there. I just said, if the facility is being rented, the user will need to provide the town proof of liability coverage that will protect the town from a third party lawsuit. Mm -hmm. And then we do say they can go to this gather guard and, and yep. get it too. Okay. So uh, was there any further discussion in regards to the policy? Maybe something that might've come up over the last couple of weeks? No, nothing? Move it to okay, so we have a motion and a second by Lindley. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right, so we'll pass it around for your signatures. I guess what we can do while we're signing that, we just have, uh, Therese can update us a little bit on uh, where we stand on some of the flood repair activities. All right, so, so as far as the flood repairs, <clears throat> we currently have three contractors still working. Um, Dan McCullough is doing um, North Road and the pipe just came in today. It was just delivered to the town garage this morning. So that's, so he's working on that. Um, Dylan McCullough has one last piece to do up on Deering because uh, it's some people are concerned that they're not that they're uh, concerned about um, emergency vehicles if they could you know if they could get in completely or not. So that he's wrapping up his version or his list of emergency repairs. Um, then same thing with um, WB Rogers, they're wrapping up their piece as well. So all the bids now are out. Um, like there's one for the West Quadrant, there's one for um, Cleveland Brook Road, there's one for Woodland, um, there's one for Sand Hill and Peavine, and um, that may be it. There's one more that's going to go out on Camp Brook. There's, or, or there's three that are gonna go out on Camp Brook. I'm gonna do a small one which is a bank armament of 18 inch culvert removal and a replacement and um, maybe armoring a bigger culvert, but the um, river engineer, Jaron Borg, is going to meet with um, Du Bois and King on another project up there. So he's gonna take a look at that and see how far back we can go. I assumed it was only 25 feet from the center of the road, but apparently he can deem that we go a little farther. So he's gonna let me know. So that will be a bid. Then of course, Du Bois and King is currently um, engineering two large culverts, um, you know, together to the tune of about eight hundred thousand dollars. And if we get those done by the fall, then that is fully covered one hundred percent by Federal Highway. If um, if we cannot hit that date and one of them becomes permanent work, it's an eighty twenty split, and other things come into play that we we want to avoid. So, what last time I spoke to um, or emailed with John Ashley and John Kenny. 
they felt like we were hopefully on target to get it done this fall. I had even said that we'd be willing to bid them as two separate projects and have two separate contractors if it meant achieving our goal. That's 100 percent. It's 100 percent. <laughs> so we're working on that. Um, is, I, is Finley in the West Quadrant or? I can't remember, honestly. Um, let's see. I think so. It must be because, uh, yeah, it is. It is. Findlay's in the West. Yeah. I know they keep going back and forth. With yeah. Well, he were also, <laughs> we, st road, well, we still have, that's actually still doing emergency repair out there because um, I forgot, yes, Derek Algeghetti is still working and he's hauling material from the quarry. So that he's still doing emergency repair. So we still have three contractors that are out, um, well, maybe four, doing emergency repair work. And then the permanent work will go out in the, that are already out in the bids. Um, those bids are due, uh, I believe it's next week. I had some due one day, some due another. And we did extend the date to November 17th, trying to attract as many bidders as we could and give people flexibility, especially if we have, if one bidder work is awarded several grants or several sections, um, but the road crew is prepared to work with someone to either grade or haul material or, you know, do what we need to do to help, um, help that. But at this point, we're just waiting to see, you know, how the bids come in and, and how they're, divvied up and um so oh and, and leonard is saying i want to thank therese the select board and the repair team for their timely and excellent repairs that were done on old route 12. so there still is a section that's coming leonard that uh somebody else is going to fix as part of a bid but your culvert i know got replaced the other day so by the road crew the road crew is also finishing their force account work and they may want to i was just driving on that road today they may want to regrade that road it's yeah even though they it's very passable now. It's mm -hmm. rough. Well, there's still a section that went out to bid. Okay. To on so does that include that whole? I would have to look at the bid. Yeah. I have too many out at this point. I mean, it wouldn't take remember. much, but it just needs to get Yeah. Ready. So, so being that, okay. being that the last um, month has been spent with our forces for the most part doing flood repair stuff as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. What what have we lost on our end? Um, of normal maintenance this time of year that we're behind on, or are we? Yeah, so we're, we're, we, I, we're behind on grading, um, and obviously there's probably some other culverts that the guys were, would have replaced instead of the ones they've been replacing. Um, a couple of them are ones they wanted to do, um, but I would say that we're definitely behind on grading. We're not behind on winter prep. We've talked about that. Um, so that's okay we still um i had a conversation with morgan today about salt and greater blades and chains and and all that but currently um, i would say we're you know behind on grading and any priority that we had of culvert replacements because there was one that we didn't receive a grant for we were going to do but we're you know we're not going to have time to do that now So maybe the culvert replacements will take a may not get to it, but it's not the end of the world. Right, exactly you know, the other push thing, it the next year yeah, and, then and just some grading and yeah, there's quite a few culvert replacements in these bids too. Some of them are just go dig out one end and let me know what you got. Cause right. I could only see one end, especially doing right. Whittier. But then there were others that were, you know, obviously trash that'll be total replacement. Right. So we're definitely gaining ground. I mean, we would not have prioritized replacing uh, multiple culverts on woodland. Uh, <laughs> so those will be new. Um, so there are some benefits, you know, you have to look at the positive side. And oh, again, yeah. the, the, new flood issues that we've had does bring up that whole other question of, you know, adds to some of the roads we're talking about now on, are they classified correctly? Mm -hmm. Should we be looking to reclassify certain things? Like, you know, you start looking at woodland, right? Yeah. Right. Like, oh, why is it class three all the way up here? Like, exactly. shouldn't it maybe stop here? <laughs> Cause, yeah. Cause maybe there's only, you know, there's only one camp or, right. or two, three accesses up there or something. Yeah, and, and we have a bunch like that. In the there town, is the road so. crew already has. They gave me a list. They have several that they want to see discontinued as well because they just it's you know it's great. Some and actually there's a couple that they gave me where the residents want us to discontinue it. Right. So those will be be nice to. to do. I don't know. I don't know how our. It doesn't seem like we have a whole lot on our agenda until October when budget starts kicking in a little right. bit. But maybe there's some opportunities to 
at least start kicking it around and yeah i don't know it's it's gonna be honestly at this point it's not your time it's my time because yeah. now i just got assigned a pdmg today for fema i have a phone conference with him wednesday and then in, then it's you know filling out some of the forms and seeing what they're gonna do for us versus what we need to do so yeah. that'll be the time suck is not on your end is on mine so yeah. We'll see um, how that goes. And of course, too, I mean, I hate to say it, but we're also, you know, going to be heading into budget season again. So because it seems like each flood that we get, we get those like, oh, I didn't know this was a class. I road. know it's and very then, true. Then we got to do something about it. Yeah, that's um, true. Top of Gilead. And not just, you know, where maybe if it was a class four, there was right. other options of doing true. or not doing. Or True enough. So how does a disaster like this impact our budget? Um, it impacts your budget because it's going to cost you 12 and a half percent. So of whatever we repair. So, um, we will get 75% from the federal government. We'll get 12 and a half percent from the state. And then the town has to cover 12 and a half percent. And if you remember from our budget last time, we had, we'd been budgeting for ERAF to pay off Pinello bridge that $1.1 million bridge to one house. So, um, and this, and so what's going to happen is we will end up, you know, continuing on with our ERAF payments, basically raising it in the budget to move it to the general fund to pay or move it to the, excuse me, capital fund to pay it off. Because basically you're borrowing from yourselves right now. So if like right now, it. the right, right. Yeah. camp work road, if, if we are successful of getting everything out bid yeah. and done, then camp work road is a hundred percent federal funded and hopefully we so can that won't that affect money. us at all so, right and that's a big ticket that's um, a big ticket you know that's a you know probably close to a million dollars now the rest of the work of course we had two flood it, you had the friday well they're calling it one flood event of, okay they have yes okay. originally it was fema one and fema two was how yeah. we were coding everything but they have what they have not provided us mm. with is an end date um which I mean, is interesting if i had to guess you're probably you know, you gotta think we're probably in a million dollar bracket so. for, That's what for I've been telling the other pieces, which, yeah. so, so we're on the hook for probably $110,000. So, so here's, here's the way I ask the question. Uh, we've had, the state of Vermont has had 17 such events since I meet, or including sure. uh, We've had three. Right? Well, we've had Irene and we had the two, we yeah. had one a couple years ago. We had April 2019 and then we had... We've had four since I've lived here. Okay. Yeah. Because so, yeah. we so, had the 2006 one oh. that took out Camp Brook Road. Well, Remember the... Well, I'm, I'm asking because the storms are getting worse. We're likely to have more frequent 100 year floods. And I'm just wondering if we are not when we get to budget building time, if we wouldn't be uh, wise to begin thinking about, do we need a contingency? Well, we certainly put aside money every budget for capital roads. So we do have money in the capital roads fund and um, that we could use. We've just been budgeting for the ERAF just because it, you know, because for the bridge, it's such a pricey item. It just kind of made sense to do right. it that way. So we do have capital funds. Um, to, to do that, and you certainly could increase your appropriation to the capital road fund. I'm just, I'm just, yeah. yeah. The good news is, I have a yeah, yeah, some of the stuff that we did in 2019, I don't think we're redoing now, actually. Not really, um, no. Nope. No, because it's two, the two culverts on, um, big culverts on Camp Brook were not, were not a part of the other one. Yeah. And I don't think any of the work that we're doing now is actually work, I don't think that we did in 2019. Maybe something on Christian Hill, but, you know better than me, Dave. I can't remember. They're going to do it. Yeah. yeah. It, it's kind of odd, like. Perm. Yeah, that one. We've got, I haven't we, bid out perm. We never I'm know when they're going to hit yeah. or if right. they're going to hit. I'm mm -hmm. just. Right. The way things are going. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just wondering if yeah. we, we. I don't want to necessarily talk about it. I just want to raise the question. Yeah, and we'll certainly whether, have a discussion about it. Whether we're sufficient. Yeah. Yeah. funding. Yeah, the in, capital road budget. I it's true because that is to... something I talked to about. My review is I want to nail down a capital road plan, so that will help. My question to you the other day was, 
the, the gravel because we, when Dylan got done up there, we got a nice wide road, mm -hmm. but we have huge ditches that should be not so big. Yeah. And it's dirt. Mm -hmm. And there's lead showing everywhere. And the last time they graded, they scraped the top of the culvert. Yeah. So that's, that plastic culvert is not supposed to be poking up through the no, ground. No, it's not. There should be at least 12 inches, of, I think, of material. Well, I mean, that's definitely one thing we have addressed in the last two budgets now is increase of gravel. Yes. That, road needs, um, that road needs gravel from right. where we tarred at to least the all the way to the interstate bridge. Right? Yeah, that's true. That's totally yeah. true. That's why I had said in my review, I want to work on a capital road plan. I have given, I created a binder. I gave one to uh, Ryan Slack, one to Chris Jarvis, one to um, Morgan and AJ, and you know, to kind of sit down and now and quantify. And, and now actually with a spreadsheet that Chris helped me build, we better off to quantify, um, cal or calculate quantities mm. for how much gravel it's gonna take to do some of this stuff. And um, so it would be nice to kind of say, okay, you know, what roads are we gonna hit? And then, then have a, a cycle of, so we know we're gonna do whatever, Christian Hill, and then we're gonna go around. But, and Dave reminded me, I have not bid out Perm Road yet because I'm waiting for an H&H &H study from the state of Vermont to figure out that culvert mm -hmm. mass. It's a big culvert to a little culvert to a, I don't know. I'm I mean, as far as the, up there. <laughs> as far as the flood activities go, I think, you know, Gene is on to something that it seems like, I mean, in the 17 years I've been here, I've been through four. So about every four years, yeah, that's we're, right. we're that's having right. an event, right? So is there something that maybe we start to think about building in when we can yeah. to, you know, do we just put it in the capital roads or does it become its own thing? I don't know. But Do we have an emergency? Yeah. I know the challenge is having been a part of the last three floods here, that they're, they've all been different. and. And that's been the challenging piece. Like if you wanted to say like, like I'll make it up for instance, like often people will say, well, if we just upgraded all these culverts, we wouldn't have these issues, right? But like if you look at this flood, re this flood versus the 2019 flood versus the um, Irene flood, they all affected different areas of the town. That's so there was, no, there was, culvert has got it every time. Now there's a couple, there are a couple of areas. <laughs> of well, fact that you need to yes, upgrade. But, that's, that's, but, but there, that's precisely my point. But there we're, are a couple of areas. We're upgrading some of the roads, but there will be other roads. Oh, absolutely <laughs> but, no. but what I just wanted to share is through my observations sure. of being out there and have looked at every square foot of road just about at this mm -hmm. point, yeah, does, yeah. which is sad to say because it takes true. a lot of time, but is a majority from what I see, there are cases where reasonably we could do something more like a little more armament maybe mm -hmm. go up one size culvert you know you get to one you know a certain size you really can't go any bigger mm -hmm. so there are some of that a majority of the issues that I have seen are things that it comes off of third party so it comes off of citizens private property onto the public highway yep. so like a, a perfect example is is right down the road from your your place if you if you go down um, Finley Bridge Road, I don't know the name of the property, but it's, after you go through that section where there's really nothing, no houses, no arrows, yeah. that very next house, it's kind of on the corner mm -hmm. right there, yep. and that yeah. whole road got washed out, all that water came off the property above that, mm -hmm. and it just ate yeah. right through it, and it, I don't think there's anything that we could have done to save that. Right. Um, so those become the challenge ones, because we can't really, what do we do, and you know, you know, maybe there's an opportunity, you know, for FEMA or working with people yeah. to build their Driveways properties back better. better or, well, there is now, I mean, um, certainly as far as when you do a, get a driveway permit, you know, there are rules about how mm -hmm. it needs to be and where the water needs to go and that your road should be ditched. Well, some of these driveways are really old, but uh, Dave made a good point about um, Sand Hill, and I am getting an H&H &H study on that. So basically, someone's mm -hmm. going to come out and look at the bankful width and the velocity of the water and make the sure. Big pile yes, of and pile. yes, yeah. exactly, and see what we're going to do with there. But anyways, you're right, Gene. Um, certainly, it's a conversation how we're doing budgets about you know, do we need to increase what we're putting aside in capital roads? So sure, you're either going to yeah. pay for it in ERAF or appropriation we're of capital. Pay roads. For it. The point is, you're going to pay, pay for it. For it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and the part that I'm irritating me a little bit is the uh, uh, ANR is saying all that trash that's getting in the river and the brooks, leave it. 
Well, when you have the water, the height it was, all that trash goes down and then right over the culvert, mm -hmm. boom. Right. It's true because that is what they, their belief about um, leaving trees in the brook and things. Their, their feeling is if it hits the embankment and then sediment comes and they're adding, you know, fish habitat as well as armoring kind of naturally nice armoring yeah down. which is great if it goes in the right place as long as it doesn't move down the <laughs> when it you gets know, hot in your bridge it's a whole other thing the so. channel under 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 finley bridge has moved yeah we've talked about that actually. but again a lot of the yeah. armament that has been done in the past rarely gets touched because it, it, it's a double-edged sword the more armament you do it does protect that area but what it does do is it allows the water more m momentum it moves, it moves downstream. The energy downstream. So you'll find that often downstream from that got it harder than than not. So I mean it's kind of a it's it's a challenge. So but definitely it's something we probably should talk about uh, moving forward on that yeah. means that <laughs> yeah. if the average yeah. ERAF is this so how much per year. Two thing, the you know? two things are anything we do in the future. Mm -hmm should be planning for resilience which means you know right. <laughs> and then what and then we may want to consider increasing for right. the unexpected yeah and we do take advantage of hazard mitigation grants and things like that i have one out on right. on gilead <clears throat> that's being done right now um McCullough, Dan McCullough is doing that work on North Road. We did, the town decided to increase to a 20, I don't think it was 24 inch, I think it might have been 18 and we were gonna go to a 24 inch because it just was the smart thing to do so we're not constantly digging up. So we have made some choices right. that will be for us to, you know, that will pay out of pocket, but they just made sense to, if you're gonna do that and repave it, to do it right. And also we located a, a, um, a drain there, so it was paved over before. So now we know it's there and we'll, you know, have it pumped. And so there's a few things about, you know, that catch basin that we located. So we have been trying to be judicious, but a lot of people are under the impression that we can fight, quote unquote, you need to fight with FEMA to get what we, yeah. doesn't work that way. Because basically they would make us adhere to our own codes and standards, which we adopted. We said 18 inch culverts, we said this, we said that. That's the standard. So that's the standard to which we need to adhere. So when it comes time again to do those, we could ask. Um, the state, but it's also difficult. You can't put a 60 inch culvert everywhere just because it might happen. And you know, it's uh, the, during the, Cleve, the flood on the Friday, mm. that state, I talked to Chris uh, Bump, the district four project manager, and he said, there's a huge boulder that just plugged that culvert. He said, we can't plan for that. He's like that, nope. you know, that just is just, some of this stuff just happens. Mm. And, um, but certainly that was also part of the better connections. Don't forget we had 30% uh, drawings on like three or four projects. So there's that as well too. So I, I feel like, you know, we're doing what we can as far as planning and, and um, that, but you know, it rains and we clean up the mess <laughs> yeah. at this point. But I did ask for more H&H &H studies this time. Sand Hill, um, Perm, you know, a few places just to be like, okay, look, if we're not, if this isn't gonna work, let's, fix it right so certainly sand hill because you're right that is a problem it's a problem area <laughs> so. now some some areas that we can mitigate things like that would be when Teresa does have time yeah is <laughs> really taking a look at some of these roads that we do have because yeah. you know we 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 forget about it until all of a sudden we go what the bridge to what one house yeah that's a million dollars you know what i mean so how many of those do we have out there or yeah. that yeah. or that road that goes just to one camp Yep. there might be a couple easements but there we have a lot of those out there we do and we also or have those one. combo class three four roads right yeah. like it's yes. three to here and four to there why is this three and that's i was a costume by I agree. the guy who lives up or has a camp up on there mm -hmm. yeah i said that's it's rough but that's possible because i was up there yeah, i was, yeah. I was, I was interested in my car so i made it i had a hard time getting up and there four wheel drive in so. 2019. yeah three and it's class three around the corner and then yeah. it's four and um you know i think that todd may have gone up to grade it out but um yeah and we have a bunch of roads like that rocks. yeah right. well that's yeah. it and um but it's class four so you're not necessarily gonna set a big precedent but yeah i'll look at the list of discontinuances because we know we have a piece on sugar hill that we need mm -hmm. to deal with the state had asked us when they were revamping I mean, and, and this is just a question mm -hmm. if we throw it out there if we knew that we had eight of them let's say mm -hmm. that are 
easy. Let's say half the people want it, right? Yeah. And they're easy ones. Is that something that we could do at town meeting day? Like you would have a... No. No? No, because... Can't be all, done at town meeting day? No, because no, because they need to all... It's not Each a town individual vote. One? They all have to be individually site visited and okay, everybody gotcha. has to be there like in that um you know 30 days before mm -hmm. you get a notice and so yeah. no it's so you not, have to do each one individually you do it's not up to the i mean you could do multiples in a day if you had three that were like right near each other you could do a site visit site visit site visit and then come mm -hmm. back and go through your quasi-judicial hearing process but it's yeah. up to the select board not gotcha. the voters but that would be nice okay but to do it we'll to schedule me. all eight on one day, and by the third one, we'll have a lot less people driving yeah. around with us. <laughs> That's probably true. I true. So I'll we'll get a list of the distant units because I know the road crew gave me some. Okay. Because those are the ones that, when the flood time comes around, you go. Because typically yeah, those roads are them. not maintained up to mm -mm. standards. Yeah. And then you go, whoa! Now we got to invest a hundred thousand dollars a year or a million dollar bridge, or you know that that adds up really fast. And I hate to say it, this time around, a couple of those are more expensive ones are on roads like that again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there any more messages from Lenny? I can't no, see No, it that, says right? one, but it's his original one, because oh, I keep checking, too, thinking it's... Looks, and now we can't see Yeah, no, yeah. it's... No, I on mine, know. it is, but it says I checked, because I thought the same thing. He's in the light. He's in the light. Okay. So, town manager's report. Anything left in there we didn't cover? So we were awarded uh, 2024 grants and aid for another hydrologically connected segment. We haven't chosen where that is yet, but that's nice because I was denied, so I'm back on so top. So does that mean potentially we'll do two, two segments next year then? We will because, okay. well, we're doing we're doing one right now, or will be doing one. The bids are due this Thursday for Macintosh. Mm -hmm. So that's 2023. So this is no, this is one next year. So was the Macintosh one that we're doing? Was that the money left over from? No, that was a different one. Okay, so we no, could. We, we passed on that one. The only way. So this is our new one. So this one is to take the place of the other one. Yep. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. And um, and then. We're not gonna be starting our water project on Sand Hill. We're gonna start on Crystal Drive and Highland and maybe Graham. Um, this gives us a chance to address the flood damage on Sand Hill and Peavine Boulevard. It also helps us not doing temporary water um, at a questionable time of year. Temporary water stinks on any time of year, so. So more pao patching? So we did talk about that. Actually, Morgan, I, and hopefully in the next uh, two weeks, they're working with Richard so that they will go out and they have done some pothole patching, but they're gonna yeah, hit Camp Brook. That's a mess. Um, I did apply for the two-part MERP grant. So the first part is um, the energy out of the town office. I'm gonna submit a second one for town hall. It mm -hmm. makes us eligible for up to $50,000 in grant money to complete work found in the audit. Um, which would be great because if we get that, you get five hundred thousand in here. Yep, five hundred thousand. What did I say? Fifty. Yeah. Oh, five hundred thousand. I'm sorry. And yeah, no. So that would be great because if we awarded that, then we'd be able. It'd be less money we'd use out of capital building fund, so we could use that towards town garage. Um, the second grant we were awarded is the four thousand dollars to be used by the energy committee for outreach and education. I'm just signing that today. Um, or tomorrow, I guess. Um, the pool closes on Friday for the season, so a big thanks to Dietrich and the staff over there. Um, and then I put a little blurb in here uh, about <clears throat> information regarding the townwide reappraisal. Uh, there's going to be a, there's a notice in the newspaper, there's a notice on Front Porch Forum, and there was a notice on Facebook just letting people know they're doing the townwide reappraisal. So, <clears throat> Obviously, people didn't call to ask questions, so we, after we saw a few responses, we figured, I don't normally respond, on, actually I never respond on Facebook, but I did this time, and we put it out on Front Porch Forum as well. So <clears throat> just if you have not been following select board meetings, uh, the town of Bethel signed a contract in March of 2022 with Nemrick to conduct a townwide reappraisal. The town of Bethel has not had a reappraisal in over 13 years. The cost of the reappraisal will be $121,080 and take place over the next two years. Any change in value of your home due to the reappraisal will not take effect for two years. Now, let's just stop there and say, if you got a zoning permit, you built a garage, a deck, a this or that, your value will change because we'll send someone out to appraise Just it. on the reappraisal. Just on that portion that you got a zoning permit for. 
Um, all property owners will be notified by a change of appraisal notice. We always do that every year anyways, and that will continue. We'll just be doing a mass mailing to everybody. Um, and people will be able to make an appointment to speak with NEMREC regarding any change in value. If they have questions or whatever, we'll, they'll be is an opportunity to do that. There's also a very equitable process laid out in state statute on if they did not get what they wanted from their meeting with the listers or with NEMRIC, mm -hmm. there's a equitable process on how they can grieve to the um, Board of Civil Authority and BCA. Um, some property values are gonna increase and some will decrease based on you know depreciation, property improvements, land values, etc. cetera, so um, you know, we hope, uh, I'll continue to read, I guess, Bethel has been saving money that we received every year from the state of Vermont, as well as contributing to a capital reappraisal fund, and that is how the reappraisal will be paid for. If you look in your March 2023 town report, our capital reappraisal fund at that time had a balance of 211058 So, but here's the big misconception about townwide reappraisals. If the value of your property increases, it does not mean that your taxes will automatically increase. Municipal taxes and school taxes are set on the value of the grand list. Grand list is the total value of all properties in Bethel. If the grand list increases, then we can raise the necessary amount of municipal tax money to provide service with a reduced tax rate. And then I gave a math example of, you know, of how that works out because obviously if the grand list value rises and we only need this much tax money, it, you know, it, it can even out so mm -hmm. people just get scared and nervous and it's always a funny story because when the bank comes to appraise your house you want to be looking like you live in the Taj Mahal when the town comes to appraise your house right. you want to be like it's an outhouse so you know there's right. a <clears throat> there's a there's a happy medium here right. that we need to find so um, we just wanted this information out because the reappraisal is going to start the end of August and I believe that the gentleman is going to start on Macintosh up in that area so postcards will be going out to property owners, letting them know that somebody is coming. Um, and if you're not there, there's a little notice that's put in a door and they can um, go right online and answer questions and fill out the information so that they don't have to come back. So, or they can. So if you're home, you make an appointment, knock on the door and they'll go do a reappraisal. It's very quick um, and painless. So it's starting the end of the month. Well, unless you have German Shepherd, then it could be And then it could be painful. painful. That's right. So there's that. And um, I think that is it. I don't think anything else came up since okay. I wrote this. So unless you, oh, there's a thing in there if you want to go to town. If anybody wants to go to town um, fair, you can sign up for it or let me know and uh, we'll sign you up. Also, too, just a reminder, property taxes are due tomorrow. Tomorrow's the 15th, so if you haven't paid your property taxes, they are due yeah. tomorrow. So that's it. Perfect. All right, we have the select board meeting minutes from both the 26th of June and the 24th of July. We couldn't do the 26th of June one at the last meeting because we only had three um, board members, one of which was myself, and I wasn't here for that meeting. So, um, so we'll have to approve those ones tonight. So, as, unless anybody has anything on those, we can approve those. I do them separate because I wasn't here on one either. Yeah. Oh, I see. There's a question mark. Oh. Well, we can. Well, we do them individually. So the yeah. the June 26 one. So the only person that wouldn't vote on it would be me because I wasn't here. Everybody else was in attendance. So anything on the June 26 ones that need to be amended or can we prove those as written? No good. Uh, okay, moved by Jean, second by Lindley. All in favor? Aye. Okay. And then we had the July 24th ones, which Lindley wasn't here and Dave wasn't here. So it was just the three of us. That doesn't, oh yeah, never mind. Any, anything uh, on those that any of us saw? I didn't really see anything that popped out. Um, so just need a motion to approve the 24th of July. So moved. Okay, and we can just do it all, um, all, all in favor vote on that. Aye. Okay, Aye. good. So you had no second, just Denise? Yeah, well, only three of okay. us. <laughs> oh, that's right, okay, <laughs> that's right. Um, I forgot, only three. Yeah.
That's right. It's just we... three of you. Um. <laughs> so we had um, other communications that were in there. I, <laughs> I always got to laugh. I mean, it's nice that we got something from the constable, and I understand that there are yep. a lot of things that can't go in it. Mm -hmm. But then you just look at it like, okay, what is that? Right. Exactly. <laughs> like, I know. You know what I mean? Like, like thank you, but okay. Yeah. You, was it anything useful? Yeah. At this yeah. time, there was a civil fraction that's closed up. Right. I but, know. It doesn't tell you us know, I, no. I mean, it would be nice if somehow, like, you could say, I'll make it up, that that was a speeding ticket for right. I can 60 ask and a 25. So at least we kind of know as a board, like, oh, it looks like. Pleasant Street's becoming an issue again with speed or yeah. something, you know what I mean? Instead but, of an equity inclusion, but and other but we can't. I don't. I don't get anything out of this other than once in a while you see animal next to it. So I'm assuming it was his other hat of you know mm -hmm. dog. But I mean, yeah, I don't. It's kind of what do we him. get out of this, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, I appreciate that he put it in there. I just is there any way he can? I can ask. Can you? Well, list? I'm gonna ask him. Rather than just be civil or criminal, can you list like the infraction? Like, right, exactly. Speed, that's what I'm saying. Speed, Instead and if so, civil. could we put like speeding ticket? What the speed was, I guess. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't have to tell the person's information yeah, or something, but subcategory is civil other. Like, can we just? Yeah. Or maybe they're none of them speed. Maybe they're all yeah, I don't other know. stuff. Yeah, I'll ask him you because know, you're right. It was yeah. I saw it. Or something. Was like, mm -hmm. Unless he thinks we're going to look all these up on his little blog. Well, well, we used to get a report. I think that's part of what oh, okay. Yeah, because like, he developed the software himself. Or, or yeah. if, when we asked or if there's a way that you really can't no. do it, then no. could he, so. could he no, or Justin come? What we used to get. I don't know. Once a month and just report yeah. back to the board on this is what we're seeing. Like right. we're seeing an uptick in speed, or we're seeing an uptick in. And then vandalism or whatever yeah. it is that we can feel I like we're a part of the process right. a little bit. I would say he could because he yeah. developed the yeah, software he that he uses. He uses spider data, which is a software he created. So mm -hmm. I would assume that he could put more information in here. So yeah, I'll it, ask him. It would be nice if we had that. Yeah. No. I wonder if just pulling up an example, because I think I know that Oscar made the software that um, Mark was using. And when we used to get a report that from the same software and mm -hmm. just showing Oscar an example from an old packet of what we used to get and see if he can recreate that report. Yeah, because they, they actually don't use the oh, same software. Oh, they're not software. using the same no, software. No, because okay. um, Oscar wrote spider data and, and um, so that's what he mm -hmm. uses. So it's a, his own software program. So which would tell me if it's his own software program, he oh, should be okay. able to figure out the details gotcha. of it. Yeah, I think that Mark used to take his off from like Spillman Probably so, um, but I can, and I think that um, Oscar still has to report. I don't know if he reports via Spillman or if his software goes, you know, automatically uploads to Spillman because he does have to report his own data in a couple locations every year. So I'll ask him. Well, he has to report in, on a lot more. Exactly, that's a lot more point. detail. Yep. So to the state, yeah. So I'll even, ask him. Even just showing him what one of those reports looked like might give him more yeah. of what we're looking for, so then yeah. he could go from there. I'll have to find the little packet, but yeah, I can ask him because um, he should be able to do that. He he designed the software. Imagine he can make it yeah. do it. So, but I'll show him what Mark used to give us. And then it looks like the um, skate park phase two will start third week of August, so next week. Yep, so after the pool closes, which is nice. Okay. And then, so what, uh, sorry, to go back on mm -hmm. the, the water project, so when, what's the time frame on the start for that now? You said the location mm -hmm. changes, but. So we're thinking right now it's the middle of September. Okay. So instead, so we, I don't have a firm date yet on their start date. They were, um, Hebert was working in Montpelier uh, when the flood came and they hadn't finished their project okay. there. So they were, I think, headed back to do that. So at last I heard it was going to be the middle of September. And they can get all of the water line for Crystal Drive installed before they do the pump station. So that's kind of their plan is to focus on Crystal Drive instead. Okay. Which is a good way to do it. And then um, once we build the pump station in the spring, they'll be able to um, to go to you know hook it up and, and do all that stuff. So the pipe will be in the ground. So made sense. So it'll be Highland, Graham, and Crystal. Okay. So that. 
Oh, and he also got that huge 12 page the IREG report. thing. Yeah, it was like, ah, kill some trees. But anyway, so you got that. So that's in there too. Um, I assumed you and Dave Eddy had seen it, but I just put it in the packet anyway, so everybody that was looking at it could see it. Or looking, you know what I mean, looking at our Right, report. and, and they, have been, they have circulated some uh, possible position descriptions. So we can look at. Okay. So you have an executive session, and um, if you guys want to do it downstairs, then we can clean up up here. Sure. Um, just quick note before we mm -hmm. turn to executive session. Um, I will not be in person for the next meeting. But you will be via Zoom. I will be there via okay. Zoom. I will just not be in person. All right. Well, we were all going to collectively try to remember that. So where <laughs> well, is this? I will try to remember to email you. What did she get my tell packet. us? Yeah, I know. We, I, okay. It's embarrassing that we don't remember. So well, it's, there's two weeks between it. There's a lot know, going on, but still. All right. Perfect. Thank you, right. Lovely. Anything else to come before the board before we enter into executive session? Okay, you just need a motion to enter executive session. Uh, Discuss a personnel matter. Evaluation of the town manager. So moved. Second. Okay. 